So when it comes to 3D printing, everybody talks about print speed and appearance, but almost nobody is talking about part strength. What if I told you that you could print parts at home that were actually stronger than aluminum? Yeah, this is real. This is the Fiber Seeker 3, the world's first consumer grade 3D printer that can embed continuous carbon fiber right into your prints and add strength that's really difficult to get your head around. Today, I'll show you what makes this new machine different from anything you've seen from Bamboo Labs or Creality, and whether this new direction in consumer 3D printing is a total game changer or really just clever marketing hype. So let's dive in. So let's start with a quick flyover here because the Fiber Seeker 3 doesn't look or feel like a typical desktop 3D printer. The unit is fully clad in, in a sturdy plastic shell and glass, which hides uh, an all metal internal structure. And every design detail here feels like it came straight out of an industrial 3D printer. Around the back of the unit, you're gonna find two spool holders, one for the left nozzle, one for the right nozzle. And over on the right side of the printer, you're going to discover that there's a pocket that holds the carbon fiber spool. But the real story is right here, the print head. This is a dual extrusion system, but not in the way most hobby printers will handle two filaments. On the right side, you've got a standard high-speed filament extruder with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and that's for printing regular materials like PLA and PETG and other rigid materials. However, don't expect this printer to print flexible materials like TPU. Now, on the left side is where Fiber Seeker 3's magic happens. That one combines regular filament with continuous carbon fiber strand and squeezes it through a single 0.7 millimeter nozzle to create super strong parts. This provides every layer with reinforced continuous fiber running through it. And it's not chopped carbon bits or carbon powder like those CF filaments you can buy. This is true structural rigidity. And switching between those two extruders, well, that's pretty much fully automatic using this unique switching mechanism that they've built into the print head. It's all controlled by software and you just choose the print mode that the printer is going to use when you create your G-code. And it's really that simple. Now to keep you informed, there's a tilting color touchscreen up front that controls some of the basic printer operations. And it's pretty simple to use. You can use it to load or unload filament, preheat the nozzles, and certainly calibrate the machine. And once you're ready, the display will show you which printing mode is in use. And there are three of those. There's high speed, high strength, and hyper strength. And I'll talk more about those. Now these modes are also highlighted on the front light bar, which doubles as a progress indicator when you're printing jobs, which is kind of neat. So that's a quick look at the Fiber Seeker 3 uh, from the outside. And it definitely feels like it came from an industrial 3D printer company. And I'll say a bit more about that towards the end of this video. But what really matters here is the print modes that are provided. Now I'm gonna show you two of the three in this video. Uh, I'm gonna show you high strength and high speed. And it'll give you an idea for how much of a difference a, a single strand of carbon fiber can actually make to a print. All right, so that's a Fiber Seeker 3 hardware, but that's only half of the problem we need to solve. We also need a slicer. And this is where things might get a bit contentious because there is no current support for consumer slicers like say Orca Slicer. And that could be a challenge for some people. Instead, the Fiber Seeker 3 uses a dedicated slicer called Aura, which comes from, from Fiber Seek's parent company. It's fairly intuitive and it works reasonably well, but let's face it, it's not Orca Slicer. So some people will definitely have some problems with this. Uh, there is a, a new slicer coming for the Fiber Seeker 3 that's basically an improved version of Aura. And uh, it's, they claim it's going to be designed for more of a consumer audience. So cross your fingers that, that that's, uh, uh, you know, that tool comes soon. In the meantime, I'm going to show you Aura partly because I'll show you what I, the tool I used for all of the, the actual samples in this video. Uh, it'll also give you a feel for the workflow in the new version of the slicer, uh, specifically for the Fiber Seeker 3. Uh, it's definitely gonna come from the same DNA as, as Aura, so it, it will operate similarly at least. So I brought up Aura on my screen and you can see there's some tabs down the right hand side. The first one is plastics. This is where you define new filaments. In this case, these are my settings for PLA. There's also composites. So this one is the carbon fiber PET G combination. This is for the left nozzle. 
Uh, next is printer, the, the printer definition. So the workspace size and a bunch of other things that are common to printers. And then I have uh, profiles. And this is the sort of interaction between the material and the thing I'm trying to print. At this point, everything that I've done here is kind of non-process. We're not actually printing anything yet. We're just defining how things are going to happen when they get printed. And to handle that, I'll use the bottom two tabs here. The first one is the models. So this is where I can load something like a Benchy and, and you know, I could put multiples on there. It doesn't matter. Then I'm going to define how things get sliced. So I have two slots here for, for filament. And basically all I'm going to do is pick the, the profile that I want to use. And that will determine the material. And once I have that, then I can create the model and subsequently save it. I can also navigate uh, through the layers to show to show how things are going to, going to get printed. All right, now that you've seen how the slicer works, let's see what those settings actually do in the real world with some hard examples. Now, I did mention that the Fiber Seeker 3 has three different work modes. And I'll walk through those and tell you what they do first, and then I'll show you some of those settings translated into real physical parts. The first mode here is high speed mode. Now this is exactly what it sounds like. It prints just like a normal FDM printer. It's focused on getting parts out fast with just regular filament. It's perfect for quick prototypes, uh, test fits, even visual models. The second mode is high strength mode, and this is where we start to add carbon fiber reinforcement, but only in critical areas. It's a balance between durability and speed. And it's great for things like tool mounts, hinges, and parts that handle some real stress. And then there's finally hyper strength mode, and this one runs continuous fiber through the entire part. It takes a lot longer to print, but the result is a structural component. This is definitely not a toy. Think brackets, load-bearing arms, or even functional end parts for this kind of operation. Now, unfortunately, with the current slicer, I'm not able to print reliably with hyper-strength mode, so I'll do the first two modes. However, since the third mode isn't isn't feasible in Aura, I did hack a print using uh, high strength mode, and I'll show you that. It, it's not exactly the same mode, but it does layer the carbon fiber in exactly the same way as it would if it was hyper strength. Now, in all three cases here, I printed uh, identical parts uh, with the same model, same infill, same material, and same size. And the only real changes are what's inside the component itself, whether it uses uh, internal uh, filament, regular filament, or starts to use carbon fiber uh, in infill, or whether it's solid carbon fiber. So let's have a look. Now, for the first example, I wanted to do a flex test. So I dropped this plate with a hole in the middle of it onto uh, the printer and printed two copies. I printed a standard PET G and a carbon fiber uh, in infilled one. And you can see them here if I hold them up to the light uh, very clearly. They both have the same infill structure and one's carbon fiber. Now, when I run a flex test with the standard one, uh, you can see it flexes about 24 millimeters. And with the carbon fiber one with the same weight measured very carefully here, it only flexes 18 millimeters. Now, understand this is about a 10% infill. This is really, really sparse. So even with a very small bit of carbon fiber inside, this print is definitely a lot less flexible with carbon fiber than with the standard print. Now to really test this, I wanted to do some destructive testing. So I printed three rings, one in each mode. So the first one is really just standard infill, 10% or 15%. The second one is high strength. And I'll show you what it looks like on the inside here. You can see it's just two shells of carbon fiber. And this third one is that hack I mentioned, but it is solid carbon fiber. You can see on the inside here, it's just continuous chunk of fiber. Uh, and when I stress these, I'll start with the with the weak one first, which printed really quickly, but it was definitely not strong. The second one, the high strength, it definitely took more, and it was a pretty dramatic break when it happened. And the third one here uh, was much much harder. It 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 was just you can actually see it flexing the the 
the vise, the clamp, and then finally I did manage to get it to break. And it, again, it was a pretty dramatic snap, but it took a whole lot more power to, to get that done. It was just completely strong compared to the other two. Although the high strength one was also very strong, definitely I'd say three to four times stronger than, than the, uh, the one with just basic infill. Now, the last continuous carbon fiber project I'll show you is this hammer I printed. It's about 30% infill in the outside of its pet G. And this thing is practical. You can actually hammer nails with it, which I think is pretty amazing. Uh, these nails are, I don't know, they're probably an inch long. They're just standard nails that are, are in cable clamps. And uh, it's being hammered into a piece of three quarter inch construction grade plywood, good one side. So it's pretty hard and you can see there's no damage to the face of this hammer at all. And keep in mind, that's like 15% infill of carbon fiber. So uh, you don't have to use a lot of it and it, you get amazingly strong results. Now, the last thing I'll do is just give you a gentle reminder that this 3D printer can print basic things too. So I printed a whole bunch of benches as I was kind of zeroing in on, on the right settings for things. Uh, this black one is PLA, the clear one, the transparent one was PET-G, and uh, they come out great. I mean, this is on par with other 3D printers. Uh, the black there had a bit of stringing, but I was still working on the temperature. The red one here is PET-G, and uh, overall, they're, they're just fantastic prints. So you don't always have to print carbon fiber. You can still get great results with, uh, with standard FDM printing with this printer as well. So now that we've seen what those three print modes can do on the Fiber Seeker 3, let's talk about where they actually matter and who this printer is really built for. The Fiber Seeker 3 isn't really about decorative prints or display models like you would typically do on a Creality or a Bamboo Labs printer. This is really for makers and small shops that need truly functional production parts. If you build things that move, carry weight, or take any kind of stress, then this printer is going to change the game for you. So think about things like drone frames, camera mounts, RC suspension parts, even a lot of workshop fixtures and jigs. All of those jobs where regular PLA just usually fails after a few uses. Now at the Fiber Seeker 3, those same designs can actually take on real world use and handle real jobs. You don't need to redesign anything or reinforce anything in your design. The printer just does that for you by laying down continuous carbon fiber exactly where it's needed. So for small businesses, this means that you're going to have fewer failures in the field and much happier customers if you're selling parts. You can, you can sell functional, durable products that feel professional and not like prototypes. For example, think of a phone mount that won't snap, uh, you know, any jig that holds up after 100 uses. Uh, and, and they're still working. Those are the kinds of things this is for. And if you're an engineer or a hobbyist then, and you're working from home, this is really about manufacturing independence. You can design, print, test load-bearing parts right in your own shop without outsourcing or waiting for a machine shop to get back to you. So whether you're building to sell or just building to solve your own problems, the Fiber Seeker 3 is going to take any 3D printing and turn any prototypes into production. And that's just a very new look on the 3D printing world. All right, let me quickly sum up here. The Fiber Seeker 3 that I have is a beta unit, so I'm not going to nitpick about any minor issues that I've had. I've covered all of those with the Fiber Seek folks. But there are a couple of things that I will raise here so you understand what this printer is and isn't. Now, because this printer evolved out of the Aniso print industrial printer business, you're not going to find a whole bunch of bells and whistles that many consumer printers have. This printer has a more traditional print head, for example, so you're not going to get automatic filament loading and unloading and color printing, the, the kinds of things you'd find on a Bamboo Labs printer. You're also going to have to buy carbon fiber filament, but it does go a long way. And the Fiber Seek folks tell me that it will be reasonably priced at about $45 for a 500 meter roll. And as I mentioned, for now at least, you won't be able to use your favorite slicer software, which might be an issue for some people. However, in the Fiber Seeker 3, you're going to get a brood of a printer that can churn out high strength parts with real carbon fiber. And it will run all day and print production parts that existing consumer printers just can't handle. So there is value here. 
And if you're building a print farm, the Fiber Seeker 3 might be a printer you want to consider because it uses all that tried and true industrial technology and it just works. Now, if you do have questions, feel free to leave comments down below and I'll try to answer as many of those as I can. And if there are things you'd like to see printed, uh, let me know that too. And I'll either pass them along to FiberSeq or I'll print some of them myself and report back. Now, if you're interested in this printer, it's going live on Kickstarter and I'll put a link in the description down below. And at this point, I'll wind down and I'll say, get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.